వెరీ చూపిస్తాం right so if you have read and understood considering it clinical examination session finally begin yes sir uh, i want to wash my hands um, and then introduce myself to the patient and confirm the name and uh, date of birth of the patient once yes. i've done this then i would explain what i want to do to him i need him to uh, i will explain i want to examine his um, uh, back and also his uh, lower limbs and I'll be uh, doing this by observing his gait, by um, feel, looking, feeling, and also assessing some movements. Then I would want to obtain um, a verbal consent. Once I've done that, then I want to position him and also expose him. I need his, uh, I need him to just be on his uh, boxer shorts. I need yes. this. Uh, yes. So once I've uh, done this, I'll start my examination by, inspe by inspecting. I would want to look around if there are any walking aids. I'll take note of them. Then I would want him to walk. I would um, ask him if he's having any pain and any difficulty in walking. I would offer him support. Then I will observe his gait, if his gait is normal or not. Then I would want to, um, I want him to stand. I'll look at the um, cervical spine for any form of uh, lordosis and also the lumbar spine and uh, the, uh, the thoracic and also the lumbar spine. The thoracic for any form of kyphosis and the lumbar spine also for any uh, lordosis. Once I've done this, I'll also inspect if there are any form of deformities, muscle wasting of the back and also the limbs. And if there are scars or any form of abnormal air growth along the uh, spine, which can which might be suggestive of a congenital uh, anomaly of his spine. So once I've done this, then I would uh, explain to him that I also ask again if he's having any pain or any discomfort. I will now want him to. Um, I want to feel. So I would want. I would want to touch him now, and I would explain to him. I would want to start from the back. I will assess for tenderness. I would also. Uh, I would. I would touch all the along the spine. I will palpate all the, the cervical, the thoracic, and also the lumbar spine. And I'll watch, I'll be looking at him. I'll be watching if there's any form of grimace to assess for uh, tenderness. Once I've done this, I'll, I'll first of all do any differential warmth and I'll also palpate and look at all areas if there are any form of pain along the uh, muscles of the spine, the paraspinal muscles, and also down to the uh, sacroiliac joints. Once I've done this, I would now want to explain to him what I want to do. I need him to make certain movements to flex his uh, spine and also extend. So while he's doing this, I will note if there's any form of uh, discomfort, if he's also having uh, difficulty in making all these movements or any pain. Then once I've done this, I want to do the uh, Schober's test. The Schober's test, I will identify the posterior superior iliac spine. I'll mark it. Then I would uh, go 5 cm below this and 10 cm above then i'll tell him to flex his uh, uh, his spine and i'll take a measurement it should be about 20 cm if it, it should be more than it should be about 20 cm that's more than 15 cm if it's reduced it's suggestive of ankylosis spondylitis so once i've uh, done this then i would want to do uh, other special tests to assess if there is any form of uh, impingement of nerves or if there's any form of uh, l4 l5 or the lumbar spine uh, the lumbar vertebra prolapse. I'll do the straight leg uh, raising test and the LASAG test. The LASAG test, the patient will lie supine I'll, uh, with, the, with the knee extended and also the uh, hip flexed. I would raise his leg 
upwards, then I will apply pressure on the ankle to see if there's any form of uh, tenderness along the spine. Once I've uh, done that, then I also do the straight leg uh, raising test. Then the femoral stretch test will be done to see if there's any form of femoral nerve impingement. It will lie prone this time around. Then I would, uh, uh, I would flex the, the, I would apply some pressure to stretch the femoral nerve. If there's any form of uh, pain, it's also, it's also positive of uh, an impingement uh, test. Then I would also want to do assess for sensation. The sensation I would do, I'll check, I would explain what I want to do to him for touch and also pain to assess the dorsal column and also to assess the uh, spinothalamic tract. So, and I'll do the dermatomaly. Once I've tested, I'll, uh, tie will be L2, L3, L4. Then the lateral part of the leg is S1. Then the above the uh, lateral malleolus, above the uh, the dorsum of the foot is L5, above uh, medial malleolus is uh, L4. So once I've done this, I'll do all this for both limbs. Once I've assessed the sensation, then I'll do all the range of movements of the lower limb. I'll flex, I would uh, abduct, I'll adduct. I'll do all this passively and actively. <clears throat> As you carry out the movements, then I'll also do them. So once I've uh, done this, I also do coordination test the heel to shin <clears throat> to assess if there's any uh, difficulty in uh, assessing the, uh, having a coordination. Then I'll do my reflexes. I'll check for all the pulses, checking for the femoral pulse, the dorsalis pedis, uh, the popliteal pulse, and also the dorsalis pedis. Then I'll assess the reflexes, the knee reflex, the, uh, also the ankle uh, reflexes. <clears throat> So once I've uh, done all this, then I would um, thank him. I would also want to conclude my examination by carrying out uh, Did you a do the tone and the clonus? Okay, yes. I'll do the tone and clonus when I'm... Okay. Uh, yes, to assess if there's any... Uh, Can you now present your examination? Yes. So I want to conclude my examination by doing a, a hip exam and also uh, uh, a full uh, neurological uh, exam of the... Uh, entire lower limb, neurovascular yes. examination. Yes. yes. So what have you uh, examined today? Okay, I have examined uh, a 40-year-old uh, man with a presence with a low back pain that radiates towards the, the left leg. Woman. On, uh, on, yes. on, okay, woman. Yeah, so I would actually need a chaperone while I was... Uh, then on clo on closer inspection, I yes. <clears throat> I I noticed I didn't I didn't take I, there was no any form of cervical lordosis or kyphosis and no yes. lumbar lordosis. He had tenderness uh, around the back and there was some difficulty in um, the range of movements. The Schubert's test is negative. Straight leg uh, raising test was also uh, was positive, suggestive uh, of the sciatic nerve roots and also. The femoral stretch test was uh, negative. Then he had normal. Test tone. was also negative. Yes, it was also negative. Okay. That's a normal tone. The reflexes are normal with no uh, clonus, and uh, the sensations were also intact. So, and had... what were your provision? What were your differential diagnosis for this? Patient? Yeah, my differential diagnosis uh, is. Uh, uh, I think he has a, a a a disc prolapse around the L4 L5. Disc okay. prolapse and? compression of the nerve root, and it could also have uh, she could also have a spinal canal uh, stenosis. Yes. Then uh, I would also want to rule out uh, other. She could be if she's diabetic. She could have a uh, peripheral neuropathy. Neuropathy. Okay. Yes, How would you uh, confirm your diagnosis? Yeah, I'll confirm my diagnosis by carrying out uh, some imaging investigations. I'll do an X-ray of the lumbosacral spine anterior posterior view and lateral view and I'll observe if there are any bone changes and also I will assess the okay. space. What are the treatment the... options that you can offer her? And also an MRI of lumbosacral lumbo spine. Yes. My treatment would be uh, uh, non-operative, which Both would include a reduction, yes. of, uh, reduction of weight, exercise, and also uh, ensure that pain is controlled. And if you would also need some uh, any form of uh, support, to uh, does uh, any form of uh, splintage, I will also uh, give her just and also to rest the limb. There, if there is uh, any metabolic anomaly, like if there is a diabetes, want to control her blood sugar and control any form of derangement that is noticed, 
then surgically she could have a, a laminectomy or a disectomy if right. uh, the non operative doesn't work. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I was following through when you were doing palpation, you felt for temperature, uh, when you were, you were feeling for a tenderness, did you feel for temperature? You there? Yes, ma. I did. Uh, yes, I, I assessed the differential for differential warmth along the. I think you did, but I wasn't sure. But uh, that you were checking for tenderness, or were you uh, feeling for the temperature? Yes, so I checked for tenderness while palpating the all the, the spine. Yeah. Okay, temperature was also like you should have uh, checked at that time, and since it was a female patient, you yourself realized. Later yeah. on, that uh, chaperone should have been there. Chaperone, yes, ma'am. Yes, and uh, first, uh, you were mentioning you'll do the passive movements and then active, but kindly do the active movements first. Yes. Then active. do the passive movements. Okay, ma. All right, ma. Like flexion, extension, and lateral rotation. First, the active ones, and then, uh, yes, if patient yes. is not in too much pain, then All you right, can do the passive movement. All the rest you've right. covered. Uh, tonus, uh, leg lift, and leg leg roll and clonus. You were yes. missing, but then I reminded you at the end. So yes, yes, ma. I yeah, so that was covered. Good. Thank you, ma.